you know, on her own. Uh, this is something that I've wanted to see happen for Charlotte for a really long time, and it's been long overdue, and I think a lot of people, not just myself, but a lot of wrestling fans have been asking and waiting for this to happen for Charlotte because we've seen her be too much like her father as time went on. And I can understand why so many people were criticizing Charlotte for being like her father, coming up with the Ric Flair ring attire, the Ric Flair moves, the remixed entrance music. I mean, it really didn't need to be happening. It put me in mind of Ric Flair from 91 through 1993 when Ric Flair was winning some of his most memorable championships from the likes of Bret Hart and feuding with people like Sting. When Ric Flair in 1991, 1992 was the number one man in the business. That's what this put me in mind of with how they were pushing Charlotte. Charlotte was pretty much seemed to be a Ric Flair in a female body. It was like Ric Flair was reborn as a girl through Charlotte. And I think that, you know, definitely Charlotte has surpassed the legacy of anyone else that have came before her and her family. Definitely her brother. Definitely she's more phenomenal on um, what her brother was in World Championship Wrestling and that ridiculous storyline they had in WCW between Ric Flair and his son and everybody else in the Flair family. Uh, but it seems like it's the same kind of storyline rehashed now, only from a female's perspective in the women's division. And they're seeming to make Ric Flair look like a pervert being involved with all these women in the division. Without a doubt, Ric Flair is feeling very privileged to be involved uh, with all these women. He thinks they're extremely talented and very uh, you know, entertaining individuals and women's division, but I think they're making Ric Flair seem to be more like a pervert as the weeks go on, and this doesn't need to be happening. It was really disrespectful how Charlotte was talking down uh, to Ric Flair. I will agree and concur with a lot of wrestling fans who felt uh, that was one of the most disrespectful promos that Charlotte was definitely forced to have said to her father, but uh, you could really tell uh, in the promo the emotion uh, that was coming from Charlotte. Charlotte had to do everything from keeping on crying, keeping herself from crying in the promo uh, with Ric Flair. I mean, she didn't want to be saying the things she was saying to her father after everything he had accomplished in the wrestling business over the last 40 years. I mean, who wants to say that to their father after the phenomenal reputation they have gone for themselves in the wrestling business? I mean, I could really feel for Charlotte in that promo that I saw her cut to her father. I mean, she didn't want to be saying the things she was pretty much forced to say by the WWE officials. And after that promo, I can imagine what happened backstage. She probably broke down in tears after saying that to her father. But, I mean, it had to be done. Obviously, the McMahons knew uh, it had to be done. And they forced her to do that because they had to get her away from her father because they hated the whole idea. And I applaud uh, WWE creative for finally realizing how much of a hateful idea it was to have her be patting herself after her father. You know, they modified the figure four into the figure eight with Charlotte, of course, modifying that move. And then, of course, the Ric Flair move arsenals with the chops and the woo, of course, written on the ring attire. It was just so ridiculous, and I really hated it. And I've hated it ever since I first saw her on NXT, and that's why I've been giving Charlotte a really hard time in recent weeks on my YouTube channel, which is why I'm really excited to see what happens now from here on out for Charlotte in her future. Obviously, a feud with Sasha Banks has been brewing for a really long time, and without Sasha Banks has now been claiming that she's been the biggest Ric Flair fan all of her life. I mean, Ric Flair was one of her idols, claimingly, when she was growing up. How much of his her idol he was, I really don't know. Maybe it's for the purpose of this storyline. Obviously, Sasha Banks has respect for people like Dusty Rhodes and Ric Flair who have been huge influences in her life and her career. We know how much of an influence Dusty was to Sasha Banks. Of course, Sasha Banks was his assistant when he was the general manager of NXT a number of years ago when Sasha Banks was just scratching the surface of everything she had yet to achieve. And I remember when Sasha Banks held up that Divas Championship a number of months ago at the Royal Rumble, saying that she was going to be a future champion and went on to main event WrestleMania in the Women's Championship match with Charlotte and Becky Lynch. I mean, it was an awesome match. And I think this feud has been brewing for a really long time, which is why I'm going to really appreciate it when it finally happens, and more so than I ever had in my life, when we see Sasha Banks take on Charlotte for that championship, with obviously Sasha Banks winning the title and trying to create a history for the newly re-debuted Women's Championship by Lita, Amy Dumas, at WrestleMania 32. And we all know the history that goes with the Women's Championship of the past, and this championship, and the history that it could have, and it won't happen until we see a new champion crown, obviously at the expense of someone like Ric Flair finally getting away, from, her, from, her, from his daughter, and I think that only good things can happen uh, because of what's been happening over these last few months in the women's division in WWE, and this is something that really needed to happen. I mean, Charlotte needed uh, to get away from her father because you can't honestly tell me that you weren't tired of hearing uh, Charlotte come out going woo and using the Ric Flair moves and being more and more like her father as time went on. I mean, everybody was irritated by that, and everybody was calling her Baby Flair. I mean, Paige hit the nail on the head, drove the nail into the Peru coffin of Charlotte's career, which could be pretty much buried, if not for getting away from Ric Flair by now. I mean, by calling her Baby Flair, I mean, she was really dead on about Charlotte, because she was nothing more than Baby Flair earlier on in her career. If she would have came in out of WWE on NXT and then eventually came over 
from NXT to WWE with a different gimmick, entirely different, separating her from her father and just playing up to the whole idea of her being her father. I think that more people would have more respect for Charlotte and everything she'd achieved early on in her career. It's the same thing can be said about someone like Lacey Von Erich, and people criticized uh, Lacey Von Erich for years, saying that she was so much like her family, but the thing was, Lacey Von Erich was far from the Texas Tornado Carrie Von Erich. I mean, she was very far uh, from that. Yeah, she used the claw because of the family reputation for using the claw uh, that Carrie Von Erich had used for years prior to his mo motorcycle accident a number of years ago uh, in the early 80s. Here's the thing. I think that, you know, Lacey Von Erich received a lot of criticism, but the thing about Lacey Von Erich and someone like Charlotte was, Charlotte was more uh, like her father than Lacey Von Erich ever was. Uh, like the Texas Tornado, and Lacey Von Erich pretty much didn't have the future that a lot of people thought she deserved, and I think that she still deserves uh, that same kind of opportunity in the wrestling business because she's just still merely scratching the surface of everything she has yet to accomplish in the wrestling business as a young female performer. And the same thing can be said about Charlotte uh, now that she's finally gotten away from her father. Charlotte actually has been given a chance to redeem herself now uh, from being like her father as time went on, and she became more and more like her father. If she was spending that time getting away... Uh, from being like her father over these last few months, I would have more respect for Charlotte. And I still think I can have uh, respect for Charlotte, but she's still got to show a lot to me. She's got to prove to me that she belongs uh, in this wrestling business. She has shown a lot of dedication to her character in WWE, wanting to be the best in the women's division, and she has showed that by being both uh, the Divas and Women's Champions since last September. But it is time to create something special. Uh, for Charlotte. I mean, the next thing to happen for Charlotte after she loses the Women's Championship is to try to win it the fourth, fifth time in her career and go on to win it probably 10 through 12 times. She won't get to the record of Ric Flair. She says she's going to be better than any woman who has preceded her or anybody in her family, especially her father. But, I mean, she has a long way to go uh, before winning 16 Women's Championships in WWE. And who's to say she's going to get to that point in her career with how many wrestlers believe stopping at 14, 15 titles is sufficient enough out of respect to the legacy of Ric Flair. It's going to be a long time before we see that happen. And with how John Cena just recently returned and is now feuding with someone like AJ Styles, which has nothing to do with a championship. Obviously, it's in the plans to have John Cena feud for that 16th title, but I mean, it doesn't seem to be in the plans for him to actually win the 16th title and for WWE to go through with that because, of, of course, the reputation of Ric Flair holding that record of 16 title wins for a number of years. I mean, nobody has gotten to that level, and I don't think Charlotte is going to get to that level anytime soon. She is a long way away uh, from getting to that point in her career, but I mean, you know, stranger things have happened, and no one is saying it is not going to happen uh, for Charlotte, especially with how much of respect that Ric Flair seems to have had for his sons and his daughters and his family over the last number of years, for the decades of professional wrestling. But the thing is, Ric Flair needs to get away from helping out his siblings and let them go it on their own. He has to have enough confidence in his own sons and his own daughters to do it on their own and to really show us what they're capable of doing. Charlotte should look at this as an opportunity not to be emotional about everything that's happened uh, for her and her career because every time she wins a major match at an event like WrestleMania or SummerSlam or wins a championship, you see the tears rolling down Charlotte's face. I mean, Charlotte needs to show more intensity Charlotte needs to show that she is, you know, tough enough to handle what happens in professional wrestling, and she needs to use this opportunity as a chance to showcase her ability and what she's truly capable of having done, because Charlotte is merely scratching the surface. The same thing I said about Lacey Von Erich as an example earlier on in her career of ever given a chance to get away from what companies like TNA Wrestling and even WrestleLicious uh, did from her years ago. The thing is, she needs to use this as an opportunity to showcase what she's truly able to do and capable of as a young wrestler in the women's division, and she can do that if given more of an opportunity to create with the likes of Becky Lynch and Paige and Sasha Banks, because Sasha Banks versus Charlotte in a one-on-one -on -one match is something that's been a long time coming, and I'm hoping we see this uh, by SummerSlam, and if something is going to be created with Ric Flair, which wouldn't surprise me none, with Ric Flair returning as the manager of someone like a Sasha Banks or even a Paige or Becky Lynch, in the future, because Ric Flair is not going to be far away from the storyline involving Charlotte. Of course, Ric Flair is going to come back to try to redeem his legacy and get the respect back that wrestling fans one time had for him after now people believing that Ric Flair is more of a pervert and more of someone who's obsessed with women now in professional wrestling by putting his hands on women in recent weeks, getting involved in Charlotte's matches physically. I mean, this doesn't need to be happening for Ric Flair, so he's going to come back and try to redeem his reputation, try to get back the respect we once had. Uh, for him, which is a long way away from happening, but I think that Ric Flair, we have not seen the last of Ric Flair, because you're talking about a guy who's claimed to love uh, the wrestling business, and who said one time, point or another, he would never retire in professional wrestling, and I really believe that, because he will never uh, go away, he'll always have something to do, Hall of Famer or not, 
in professional wrestling. We have seen anything but the last of Ric Flair. The same thing we said about Jericho, and Jericho said this for the Road to Jericho DVD released a number of years ago. He said, we have not seen the last of Chris Jericho, and he'll wrestle until he's wheelchair bound, and he'll have the reputation Ric Flair has, maybe not as great of a reputation, but something similar, because he'll keep wrestling through the years, because he loves uh, the wrestling business and the fans and everything the wrestling business has represented and meant to him for the last number of years. The thing is, we have seen anything but the last of Ric Flair, but I think this is a tremendous opportunity for Charlotte, and I think this is an opportunity that she really needs to take full advantage of and go full throttle with, uh, because if she takes full advantage of this opportunity, only great things can happen for someone like Charlotte, and I am really excited to see what the future has in store and what it will detail. Uh, for Charlotte, what do you think that future is? Is it something different from what I think about the future of Charlotte? You can let me know in the comments of this video blog on my channel at Jonathan Clark 22 on YouTube, on Twitter at Jonathan Clark one You can get in touch with me also on Facebook at HGW Entertainment, on Google Plus at the same. And let me know what you think of the future of Charlotte. Do you think it's something pretty much that uh, kind of concurs with what I've had to say about Charlotte or something entirely different that separates it from my opinion? on the future of Charlotte, because so many people have created a diversity in the wrestling business. So many people have an opinion of the difference from other people in the wrestling business, but the thing is, that's what I really appreciate, the diversity uh, coming from wrestling fans, and I know I want to apologize. I've apologized a number of times for being so criticizable towards Charlotte and everything that's happened for Charlotte, but I mean, who can blame me at the end of every video commentary I've thrown up on Charlotte over these last few months? Who can blame me for feeling the way that I have about Charlotte when she's so much like her father, more so as time goes on. It seemed like it was getting worse uh, for Charlotte. More wrestling fans were finding a reason now to turn off professional wrestling and not watch the product, not get in uh, to the product. But if you were looking for a reason to watch wrestling now, nowadays, you've found that reason. Wrestling fans have found that reason they've been looking for in someone like a Charlotte because Charlotte's future is filled with nothing short of being unprecedented and so much promise. And I'm really excited. I can't help myself, but I'm really excited for the future of Charlotte with WWE and so much honor that she has yet to achieve because she's just merely scratching the surface of everything she has yet to accomplish. On for album revival, here is Selena Gomez and hands to myself. I'm your host, Jonathan Clark, and I will talk to you again next week. Woo for now. Like what you hear? Tell us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. <laughs> Can't keep my hands to myself No matter how hard I'm trying to I want you all to myself You're metaphorical gentle